Anil Kapil, great to have you with us and congratulations on listing. It's a big day for delivery. Now that uh, we're out in the market, I want to talk a little bit more about, you know, the way forward. Uh, let me start off, uh, Salil, by getting a sense of, you know, the kind of uh, growth you anticipate, uh, you know, for the company, the, the the advantages, the competitive advantages you have in terms of being a, a interoperational, full stack, et cetera, and really the way forward now for the company. Sure. Uh, thanks for having us, Abha. Um, you know, the market that we operate in is, is one of the largest addressable markets today in the country. India spends somewhere between you know 200 billion to 220 billion on, uh, on logistics, and that's really the space that delivery is going after. We uh, we've been growing, you know, nearly 50 percent a year for the last two years as well, and we've actually accelerated in the pandemic off of a larger base. And uh, you know, in our view, just given the size of the market, the fact that India has been historically fragmented and under capacity from a logistics standpoint, I think. The way we look at it is that this growth is something that will persist for a fairly large period of time, you know, as the market consolidates. Uh, one of the things that people have talked about for quite some time is that Indian logistics will consolidate, you know, large players will emerge. You know, if you look at the rest of the world, the U.S. has FedEx and, uh, and UPS, you know, Western Europe has DHL, China has seven large players which have emerged in the last 15 years. That just hasn't happened in India. And in that sense, that's, that's a huge opportunity, not just for delivery. It's an, it's an opportunity in logistics you know, for organized players as a whole. So I think our growth will continue. From our standpoint, Abba, what's, I, I think what's most important is nothing changes. You know, we are, are, we're a network business. We're fully integrated. We will continue to provide the same services that we always have, which is, you know, express transportation, whether it's parcel or freight or full truckload freight or warehousing. Um, and we will continue to do it larger, cheaper, faster, and more reliably. And so strategically, in some sense, for delivery, you know, pre-listing, post-listing, nothing really changes. We will continue to do what we've been doing for 11 years. Fantastic. Uh, no, this has been a phenomenal growth story. Uh, Kapil, let me get you in on how tech has been a differentiator as well. You know, when it comes to uh, the business externalizing the tech platform now as future strategy, what you're looking at. Absolutely. You know, so we've been building this tech stack for almost like 10 years now. Uh, we have over 80 different applications, products, services, uh, which are used not only by us, our own operators, but also by our partners, by our customers. Right? Um, and in the last 10 years, what we have been doing for ourselves with the data, with the application, the idea is to accelerate it. Uh, we have rebuilt data stack in the last two, three years. We already started to externalize it. Uh, earlier this year, we did launch in another country, and the plan is to continue to focus on that. And as we do externalize, we will also take our learnings from all of the mass massive data sets that we have follow AI and all the model that we do. We'll take that out for long with our generation. Great. So, Lil, you've got a huge amount of cash on the books, right? So if you were able to share with us, you know, just strategically what you're looking at, are you happy with keeping that in the bank? Are you looking at acquisitions, uh, tie-ups? Are you looking at uh, spending this on tech, marketing? What's what's really the, the strategy? Sure. So, yes, you know, I think post the, uh, post the listing, uh, we will have, somewhere close to about 6,600 crores of cash on uh, on the balance sheet. And uh, I think, first of all, the good thing for us is that growth and profitability aren't conflicting objectives for delivery. If you look at our RHP, you'll see that the company can basically finance its needs at this point in time. Um, where this cash will be used, I think, one is we've historically, over the last year or two, been acquisitive. I think the logistics space will consolidate. We will look for opportunities. There are two kinds of opportunities we will look for. One is complementary networks. So we acquired a company called Spot On last year, um, which was one of India's leading players in the power truckload space. And that brought a lot of scale to our power truckload business. But also given the fact that we're an integrated business, when we grow one part of our business, the other parts of our business automatically benefit. So when we bought a power truckload business, actually margins improved across our express business as well. So we will look for opportunities like a spot on, which are complementary, which give us scale in our business lines and you know, look to buy those out. And we will also look for bolt on technology acquisitions. So we bought a company called Primer Seller, which expands our, our stack for direct to consumer brands. We acquired a company called Road Piper, which allows us to expand our stack for fleet owners in our truck road platform. We've got a company called TRI Robotics, uh, which, which has a specific capability in, in drone delivery. So there are these interesting technology acquisitions that we will look for as well. Uh, we will continue to invest in technology, obviously, uh, both in terms of building software and externalizing our platform across other geographies, 
but that's not very capital intensive. That's just more IP intensive for us. Um, but outside of that, look, we're in an uncertain market. We're in a market where you know there's an opportunity for delivery to grow 40, 50, 60 percent a year. And having the cash on the balance sheet right now gives us that balance. It allows us to go out confidently, build capacity, you know, which is what the market needs. Fantastic. Just, just you know, what markets like to hear, uh, you know, the kind of growth that's anticipated. Kapila, how are we, how are we also looking at, um, you know, proprietary tech uh, and, you know, the, the way that it drives efficiency in the business, the way that it's, you know, an enabler uh, in this uh, growth plan as well? Oh. So, you know, as I talked about earlier, the technology does play a very critical role, not only for us, but also for our partners, our fleet vendors, people who work with us to deliver on our behalf. Right. Uh, one thing that really sets us apart is the amount of data that we collect and what we do with that data. We collect uh, over a terabyte of data on a daily basis. We collect data from the vehicles that are running across the country, pretty much every highway of the country, every day, every kilometer over there. The amount of information that we capture, the telemetric information over there. The parcels that we deliver to our customers, we deliver over a billion parcels, so a billion addresses that we have access to. And all that information we use to you know, develop our own proprietary algorithms, uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, to make a better understanding of our location stack, a uh, better understanding of how do we optimize our network better. Uh, we are, I think, one of the only players uh, who work on a, a dense mesh network, which is very different from what a traditional uh, hub and spoke network, which are the logistics companies use. So all that is what technology allows us to uh, you know, think about more efficiency, uh, different optimization at different levels, and you know make us more precise and, and, uh, and faster. Tell me just to uh, you know just just one more question and in terms of the um, amortizer beta, I think those were the numbers I was looking at. Just the kind of improvement that you've seen in the last few months and and you know couple of years, just to give our audience a sense of uh, how scale has only amplified, uh, you know, in because of uh, because of the way you've grown and certain uh, decisions that you've made and how you see this continuing now going going forward, like this formula perhaps that's working uh, that you, uh, uh, you that you plan to continue now. Sure. Uh, you know, if you look at our numbers in the RHP, what you will see is in financial 19, we had an adjusted EBITDA, which was about negative 11%. And for the nine months of financial 22, our adjusted EBITDA is negative 0.74%. Mm. Um, and actually, in the first quarter of financial 22, we were at negative 3%, which, you know, if you do the math, so that what you'll see is that quarter two and quarter three for us actually at an adjusted EBITDA level that is profitable. So, which is what I meant when I said the growth and profitability are not conflicting objectives for delivery anymore. It's in our RHP, you see, for example, our adjusted cash back is positive as well. Um, what you're seeing fundamentally is actually not very complicated. We have massive operating leverage in our business. You know, while Kapil was talking about why tech is important to us, fundamentally logistics is you know improving the productivity of three things: you know, people, vehicles, and infrastructure. That, that's it. So, you know, if people deliver more packages, the cost to deliver a package comes down. You know, a truck carries more packages, the cost per package comes down. You know, infrastructure transacts more packages, the cost per package comes down. And what we're seeing in our business is the benefits of integrating the parcel and the freight business with the acquisition of spot on, for example. We're becoming more productive. Our technology is giving us that edge. We're also moving to larger form factors from an automation standpoint, from an infrastructure standpoint. You know, we run one of the largest trucking terminals in the country today, which is you know semi-automated, and all of these are basically how margins are continuing to go up. Now, our assessment obviously is that we, you know, this year we'll, we'll break even. The nine months of financial 22, as I mentioned, you know, we're negative one thirty percent, and margins from this point on, I think, will continue to improve. What's most interesting that I think we should point out is that our margins in quarter two and quarter three actually went up in an inflationary equivalent environment. You know, and so despite that, what you're seeing is massive productivity gains, which we expect will continue. Fabulous. Thank you both so much for your time. Have a great day and look forward to continuing to engage with you on business. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank Thank uh, Thanks. Bye. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.